So you barely just made it into New York before the hurricane. Oh uh, yes, that was uh, that was a little strange. Everything was so up in the air. Yeah. 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 Well, we're glad we're glad you made it. Yeah, and I'm so glad that uh, Pastor Hush had the uh, power finally the night before. That was that you were one of the first shows that they had coming back, right? Exactly. Yeah. And we we're not sure if they were so flooded or what happened. You obviously do a lot of work with um, contemporary composers in the U.S. What about Chinese composers? Um, I'm hoping to start that, but right now my role there is just trying to get the idea of contemporary music, contemporary piano music in people's minds. And uh, I've, I, I see that over the last past year or more that uh, there is significant um, improvement in that. Um, for example, I was just uh, featured on a, the only piano magazine in China. It's distributed a lot, like um, 300,000 copies nationwide. Um, and it was a 14-page feature oh, with me, in interview with me, talking about just just life of a, a pianist became a uh, contemporary pianist and how should people listen to contemporary music because it's so foreign there. Even even classical music is a relatively new thing, you know. After you know, coming off of the '60s, I mean, China is is it's it's embracing this in a relatively new way, right? Uh, yes, but there's such enormous passion and enthusiasm for classical music, especially especially piano music. So many piano students there, you know, who practice like my students in China now. They practice, well, not that I told them to. <laughs> they just, they had this, uh, I told them to reduce the hours to like five or six hours a day. They used to, like when they came to us uh, from the conservatories, they used to practice up to 10 or 11 hours a day. That's for me, I think, too much because to be a good pianist, you've got to open to the world. You've got to see things, have time to understand music outside of music. I was worried that it's going to be like zero people coming <laughs> because who would go? They have they had absolutely no idea. Um, <coughs> there was about 300 people there and great listeners. They were like super quiet, mostly academic though, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, but not academic from only music conservatories, but a lot of top universities, Interesting. which don't have pian uh, music majors, but I think um, they study music on their own anyways. And just in your own personal experience, what do you think is, is China's interest right now in, in classical music? I mean, is it, is it a class thing that people see a chance to, you know, to send their kids and to move up in the world? Or is it, is it a way to express cultural ideas that evades, you know, some of the censorship that we see in the other uh, media? I think about that often myself. I don't think I can give one answer to that because it's, it's a big question. Um, definitely yes to both of that, we just said, but more of um, just a sense of just obsession of Western culture, I think, and piano music, the elegancy of it, the, the European royalty connotations of it. And, and the kind of high education, the, the impression of that, and then the, the students later on when they become pianists have the chance to see the world, I think, for the experience purpose. Mm. So yeah. it is, it's a gateway to, to other avenues and experiences for the students. Yes, I think because China is so close and still, wow, much more close than the US, it's their way to, um, to be seen in the world and to receive the world. In America, classical music has a, a lingering stigma, like you say, of, of European royalty, which some people like. Um, mm -hmm. Vast amounts of America is a little bit repulsed by that, and it's, and it's an uneasy relationship. In China, it, it sounds like it's, it's actually a good thing, that this is a way to enter, you know, to enter into that world of European royalty. But what about strains of, or the interest of people in their own culture? I don't just mean nationalism, but there, you know, how does how do people want to merge, or do they want to merge, classical music with with traditional Chinese music and values and culture? I have not sensed so much of it, 
there are some uh, piano music written uh, in the tunes of folk ideas, uh, Chinese folk songs. They're usually failures. And uh, failures in terms of musically, yeah. yes. And and students don't play as many of those anyways. They would maybe play it once a while for a popular tune and just as an encore or something. Um, so far, I don't see much of the merch uh, other than contemporary Chinese music, like what Tan Dun is doing, or some more um, other composers like Chen Yi and or, or the the almost the founding member of. Chinese music in in U.S. Chao Wen Chong, yeah, and and these people who took their Chinese roots to U.S. and uh, merged it really well and great and profoundly in their music. Uh, so tell me about the foundation that you run in China. Oh, it's called uh, Face Art Music Internations, and uh, our mission is to be the bridge between China and the Western. Uh, culture and artists, and to have um, to offer the um, opportunity to the students in China also to see the world in a easier way, more accessible. Like if we could just bring one artist in instead of you know bring twenty, thirty students abroad. Mm. And uh, so, so it's about exchange. It focuses on exchange. Yes, so far it has been working wonderfully. We also do a lot of education there teach I, I taught sometimes 60 hours a week there too wow. yeah and it's really it's very touching to see these people's personalities being changed also because they're young and they're so they came from really okay now I have a chance I have to say it um, because I felt very angry that there's such abusive scene in the classical training piano training in China that our students they came from often abused uh, abusive teachers not only um, mentally but also physically they slapped them or hit them and someone just broke a student's nose and, and, and someone's ear it's it's really it's just so shocking for me because you know coming from a western uh, stand standpoint and and thinking that China is a really more of a modern country now and where I live in Shanghai that less of that happened but um, in other cities in China also major major cities just more north of China um, things like that are still happening and somehow the students and parents most of them do believe it's the normal thing there unless they they came to us and see a whole different world the New York Times review that came out earlier this week talked mm -hmm. about um, the mixing and matching that you did with the repertoire and that it was possibly inspired by your teacher, um, Pierre Laurent Amart. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I, uh, I really one day all of a sudden wanted to study with uh, Pierre Laurent Um I never met him in person that time and uh, I just I was terribly intrigued by the way he was uh, programming. So I shot him an email and he <laughs> answered me in 20 minutes and then you know, I sent him the CDs and, and then it, it goes and, and I moved to Germany to study with him for almost two years. Oh, that's great. That's very exciting. So he's had an influence on, on how you want to program contemporary music. Not only the influence of wanting to pro program contemporary music, but also um, he's such an expert in what I really wanted to learn about modernist European composers. So that offered me really, really a lot of knowledge uh, and depth and more variety because I learned a lot of um, Feldman and Cage, a lot of great American composers in US. And, and to put myself in the location of Europe and at the heart uh, Cologne where, you know, Ligeti, Stockhausen, they were all pretty much based there. To, to really work with these musicians there, um, that was a great experience. There have been some big ideological differences and mm -hmm. arguments um, that probably have, have faded you know, somewhat since the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But what, what do Europeans over there think about the American composers like Cage and Feldman? So that's the surprising thing. I went there and hoping I'm going to take all the classes on 
you know, Stockhausen or Boulez or something. And instead, all they were teaching was Feldman and Cage. Really? Yes. So I was like, oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm repeating my courses. Uh, and then they, they, they treated me as an expert in that and wanted me to do a lot of presentations. Um, I, I read a 45 minute long um, quote from uh, Cage, the book Silence he wrote and presented there, slamming the table also and lighting up a cigarette and not smoking. And um, <coughs> I think they were really fascinated by something they don't have. Well, the most important question that I have for you today is uh, there were reports of you have wearing a mirror in your <laughs> dress at, at your recital <laughs> at La Poisson Rouge. Can you explain that to us? Um, or not. What is there to explain? Uh, that just came out of my fantasy world. I never did anything like that before and that is, um, I hope, for me, nothing about any gimmicky source. And uh, I think because I'm really interested, I, I am a big fan of Nabokov and, uh, for example, his Lolita, which is really a strange fairy tale for adults that have very profound and dark meanings um, and can be looked in different ways, of course. And also that in psychology, that mirror reflects some kind of self-reflection. It's always mirrors and the windows. And it, it I thought I, I put it together with this almost too much um, some audience said I looked like a bl blue pumpkin Cinderella <laughs> with blue hair. I, I wanted to offer some kind of uh, fairy tale or Dali-like uh, impression that makes people reflect also themselves when they see the lights, the mirror, and with the pairing of music to, to have their own reflection on how modern music has become and how does it work now when we look back to Scarlatti, for example, or Chopin. So, and then the rest is left to the audience. <laughs>